Hey, it's Azure Friday. We're talking with Corey from the Virtual Machines team. Yeah. I've made some VMs, but I still feel like I'm kind of um, amateur hour. Mm -hmm, I'm mm -hmm. making. I feel that about you too. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> I mean, I'm making kind of these onesie twosie yeah. VMs. I've got load balancing, which is nice. Right. But you know, in reality, large systems are going to have virtual networking, and, and yeah. you know, it's going to be complicated. Right. Right. And right. and I feel like it's great that I've got poof instant uh, load balancer. Yeah. Yeah. But. What, what's what, the next step? What's the next step? Yeah. What if I need to connect to my virtual machine privately or yeah. VPN That's into right. it or That's it right. talks to my back end? That's right, yeah. And you know, one of the things that we've seen uh, with a lot of folks who are spinning up sort of larger deployments, even SharePoint farms, things of this nature, they do require two things, right? They require uh, sort of a private uh, and controlled network, right, mm -hmm. which we now offer as part, of our, as part of our solution. We'll walk through. But in some cases, they also require that same network to be connected back on premises. And no one's going to yeah, connect yeah, yeah. a network on premises unless it's sort of protected in the cloud, and that's kind of what we well, because you saw me remote into a public, like a, it's, Correct. it's out on the public internet that's now. Right. That's and right. And that's what people don't like about that's the That's right. Cloud. And we joked about the bad password and, you know, yeah, getting, yeah. It, you know if, you're, if you're disconnected from the public internet and you just go through this private uh, private channel, you end up having a lot more protection. So how do, I, how do I do that? So, yeah, just to start off, there's a there's a tab here on the left that basically says networks. Uh, and this, this allows you to basically, yeah, create this completely separate from any other resource, okay. right? I've it never just, been in this part before. Oh, okay. This is, ex this is exciting no, for No, I'm me, serious. This, like, you can see all the ones marked zero. Yeah, I've never been. You've never done. I have never. Well, been I'm there. excited to see sort of how this flows for you. So go ahead and create a virtual network. Okay. And so what you're doing here, you're giving it a name. So I want you're, in Asia. You pick a region. Well, I think let's let's go east U.S. Actually, that's uh, okay. uh, It's a little bit a little bit nicer over there. Um, and uh, I'm from the east. So I, I don't know if you knew that. Yeah, yeah I could yeah. kind of tell. Okay. Oh, really? it's not like you're broadcasting it. Okay, that's <laughs> offensive. Um, <laughs> and just because my hair is so well done. Um, okay, so uh, just pick a name here. So virtual whatever Scott virtual Super network. network. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. So you basically, we're just going to create an Infinity Group, and that makes sure that you keep them together. Put them in uh, MSDN. That's uh, just pick your name over here to the right. Uh, Scott MSDN. There you go. Perfect. Okay, it just has to be a num some number. Yep, exactly. Okay, now, as, a, I hang on, as I type down there. Okay, it's drawing boxes for me. Exactly, it's going to draw your network out as you go. Oh, okay. So this is the name of your network. Uh, Super and network. So, exactly. All right. And you pick the account. So let's move forward. Oh, I hang on. It's in Asia. How did oh, did back? you do that? I left it in Asia. Oh, come on. What do we say? East US. There you go. Okay. The best, the best place okay, in the so world. DNS okay. So DNS servers. So here's the thing. The other thing that we actually offer as part of a virtual network is that it actually allows you to control what the DHCP options that you're going to get. And so with this, you can basically say, hey, look, I'm deployed in the cloud, but I have a DNS server that I want to use on premise. A DNS server or an, a, an AD box, for example, mm. that's got all of my identity. You can say, here's the IP address. Ah, look at this. Oh, this happens. Okay, it's this being is updated. Totally random. That is amazing, actually. A newer version of the portal is available. So someone just deployed we the just portal. We just deployed an update to the I, portal. What is this? It's like 11 o'clock. Do it I actually? Just, I wasn't playing. Yeah, interesting. Or maybe, maybe, just hit uh, maybe okay? they didn't tell me about it. Yeah, hit OK. You'll reload. and We and have to start our Everything's going to be fantastic. <laughs> it's going to be way It's going to be so much better. It's gonna be I, way I can better. barely wait. OK. Once it loads, the, the loading screen is not better. Or whatever. And now we're on there a we new go. version. And it's funny, you can actually go down to the corner here, I think. And see the, see the version you're on. And yeah, look at the version of the portal uh, under help or not. Maybe that's what they updated. They removed you that. You think they removed that yeah. part? Oh, there, there we go. Is. Where is the little, you know, there used to be a thing down here where they tell you the secret version of the portal. And you could tell everyone that, like, I'm on that version. Oh, yeah. All right. So, uh, do, 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 I think do, there may do, be some window key command or something. Yeah, there's like some kind of a thing. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. Networks. networks. All right. Well, we gotta start over. Again. All right. Yeah. Uh, super networks. Uh, Scott no, MSDN. Scott MSDN. Make sure you're east. There we east go. US and MSDN. 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 Okay. So as we were talking about for the DNS, so like if you have that DNS on premise, you basically just say the name is not as relevant, it's the IP that matters. And what happens is when these VMs boot up, they'll get that IP as this is the DNS server I should connect to, and they'll just immediately go to I don't have one. You don't have one. Let's not do one right now. Can I use open DNS or like that? You could, actually, you could. But it's up to you. Well, I mean, if we're if we're gonna break stuff, if we're gonna do something, let's do something. So there's some DNS servers. These are public DNS servers. Perfect. So I would just say open DNS one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this is the one. Okay. 
So Great. So at this point, I think we'll, we'll skip this, but the two, the two options that you have here for connectivity, so like I said, one is just you're creating sort of the secure uh, network environment in the cloud, okay. right? but then the other one is how you want to connect to it. So there's two ways to connect to it. You can either use site-to-site, -site, which means you've got basically a corporate I, uh, VPN device that's going to be able to connect using IPsec in a secure way to a gateway that we spin up. And so mm -hmm. what this ends up doing is connects your entire corporate site to the entire Azure site, right? And basically it makes it an extension of your network. But not all of Azure, but just this part of Correct, Azure. Correct, the part this that you've secured and deployed your so own. So are you saying that it would be like, I could make a SQL Server then in Azure, mm -hmm. and it would be as if it were inside my company? Correct. Correct. And in fact, this is where you see a lot of folks, you know, like MSIT, our IT department does this to be able to sort of, it's basically expand their network and expand their space to be able to just use Windows Azure for it. Uh, and so it's a very valuable Do use people know this exists? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I hope so. I, if they right. don't, they do now. Scott. No, but I'm just thinking yeah. because I didn't know this. No. So, so this, I'm just thinking about you could have a small company. Yep. That has a whole network. You back can have end you can have most of all your, virtual. You can have most of your backend in Windows Azure, and you can just keep whatever your local office uh, objects there, uh, and you're in your and local. It's, it's not accessible to the public. Correct. It's all it's all locked down. Yep. And then so and the other site. option is point to site, and so that's not your entire network. It's a single box, right? And so what you can end up doing is you can basically say this box we're working on right here, for example, could connect as if it were a part of that network as well. And so instead of saying all of Microsoft's network is connected, you're just saying this machine is connected. And so that's what the point is. So ah, the two, it's the, the point, terminology is site to site. Exactly. To this site. machine is now a point in point to site. Okay, which, Does that make sense? Do I want to do either of those? Go ahead and click. Uh, go ahead and click point to site. Okay. Okay. Oh, look at that. So it draws a little picture. There you go. So I'm clients. You're clients. Okay. Great. All right. Now hit next. Okay. Now here, here's the fun part. You actually Ooh. get to define your address space. Right, so uh, you know, it, and it has different ways of defining it based on your capability or, or what you're familiar with. For example, they have the CIDR, but they also explain what CIDR means for people like me, yeah. uh, who is like, I don't know what da Dash 24, what the hell is this? Um, the idea here is that you basically are defining for the VMs that are going to run inside the cloud, what network address space are they going to drop into? So when we deploy a VM here, it will now come up as 10.0.0.4, oh. and everyone in the world could deploy their own 10.0.0.4 because it's, it's a private network. Because I know virtual my house network. is 192.168. Exactly, exactly. Okay. So, so we I can care? go, but no, it doesn't. It doesn't matter. And then you can go in and say how big you want, and so they have the slashes, but then they have in parentheses the actual. Okay, so sense. I'll do the big one. Yeah, go ahead and do the big All one. Right. Let's go. And then you can add additional subnets to that address space. So you okay. can basically say, okay, what subnets do I want? You can just make one. If you're doing a different farms, you may want to have different subnets for, for sort of managing across them. But at this point, you're probably good to just go. I like that it's drawing the picture because I'm, you know, this is something I'm going to get confused by. It's a visual, very visual. So I hit complete. Oh, I need a gateway subnet. Oh, yeah, go ahead and add that. Right. So that's going to be what that gateway is actually sitting on when you connect to it. Ah, uh, okay. All right. All right. And that should just create. Now, is this is all software and magic, right? Yes. It's not physical things aren't happening right Correct. now. Correct. Correct. That's right. That's right. Well, actually, actually, let me I take that back. The gateway is actual virtual machines. It is still software, ah. but we're actually spinning up machines on your behalf to be that gateway. Okay. So yep. here's my virtual network. Yep. That's right. And so you can go over here. You can uh, check dashboard and sort of see how it's deployed. Oh, you see, it's actually you haven't you haven't yet connected, right? So the gateway is being created. Let's go ahead and spin up a VM inside this virtual network. Okay. So, so go, this is bad or good? No, it's just it hasn't fit, you haven't connected yet. So when we actually oh. go through the process to connect to the gateway, it'll sort of connect okay. and show you as a client. All right. So now what do I do? So go over here to the virtual machine tab, uh, and let's go ahead and spin up a virtual machine. So just a fresh new virtual machine. Okay. Does it matter? What's a what's a nice simple uh, one? Let's to do? go with Ubuntu. It's pretty quick. Uh, should be good to get that going. Perfect. Okay. Pick a name here. Uh, Super Network Linux. Perfect. The small is good. Oh, it's too long. Super Ubuntu. It's small a good name. Is fine. Small is good. Let's just make it a password. So I don't sure. have any. I don't have any search lying around. Yeah, to make use. sure you remember the password here. Okay. Yeah, really. Yeah. This has been a problem. It has been. Oh. Yeah. yeah. See, there you see. go. We'll have to have a little fast forward part where I type there my you password. Go. Okay. So remember, Azure user is our username. Yeah. Okay, great. Now here's what I want you to do. Click on this tab right here that says virtual network. And I want you to go oh, down. Wow. Oh, you've already you're in super network. I apologize. So it defaulted to the right network. So now this is basically saying I'm going to deploy this into a network. Now you can see, hey, what subnet do I want to deploy into? And uh, you only have one. Uh, I have the one. But, yeah, but yeah, you yeah. can see okay. sort of that the, that you can go down there and and, uh, and deploy it. Okay. And so you'll deploy it and, and it'll come up now with the address 
10.0.1.4 is the address that this VM will come up with. It Why starts do I know four. It's four. Uh, the first three are, are actually reserved, so it ends up being, uh, it always starts at the dot four and then goes 27 addresses out from there. Okay. Yeah. So then that virtual machine is spinning up. Correct. Now go back to your virtual network, actually, and let's see. As soon as that VM sort of pops in there, you'll see it. Oh, so the VM. The virtual network actually keeps track of what's Is going to connect. It. Because the VM has been associated with it, it's going to, is it be a resource? That's right. It'll show right there in that resource as soon as ah, it ends up getting created. Interesting. That's right. And this will then connect. It won't yet. So there's two parts of the virtual network, right? So the VM deploying inside the virtual network means uh, that that VM is going to be, again, protected and secured as part of that network. It's got that local IP address space, et cetera. To get this to connect, you actually need to set up a, either a VPN device on premises or do the point to site. Okay, so hang connect. on. I think I understand. I just made a router, a bridge. I put, I gave it an IP address space. I set up a DHCP server. Yep. Because I'm thinking about this like I'm, a, I'm an older guy, right? Yeah, so I'm yeah like, that's right. I, this is how I built this yeah. physically. Yep. I can't see it though. Yep. I then put a machine on that network. Yeah. Connected to it. Yep. It's getting its IP address, not from the public internet, but rather from that new router that's I just right. set up. That's right. But now that router is out there in this private little network that I've never connected to. Correct. And I, I can't access that virtual machine. Correct. Well, you can. So there's two ways. Uh, yeah, you can't access that machine through that private network. You can still also open up the public network if you want to. If I want to. If you choose to, right? I so, see. like our IT department doesn't, uh, but you can, right? And so this allows you to. Maybe you're configuring it. You haven't yet set up. Which right? would be like taking a network cable over and plugging it into it's the like thing. It's like a second and cable. Temporarily. Exactly. Exactly. And, and maybe you, you maybe you set it up that way. But once you get this connection going, you can then unplug that. And you do that just by removing your endpoints. You just say no endpoints okay. on this guy. This will be a super long video, but this will be a good one. Yeah. Okay. So with, it's, all, the, with it's, all the failures here. No, no, but this is important. Uh, people, people need to understand this stuff. So when it's oh, firing, sorry. when it's firing up a virtual machine. Yep. Uh, it's it's copied the blob over. Yeah. It's got to boot the machine up. Right. And then it's got to provision the machine. Provision exactly. is what. So provisioning is, you know, the things we talked about a little bit earlier. It's setting up the username. It's putting in, if you have a, a cert, uh, it's configuring the for, for first usage, right? There you for go. So now it says provisioning. Oh, great. And then look at this. Popped right in. Oh, okay. So there hang you go. on here. So it says. And there it's got the IP so address. So it has an IP I address. Would. Okay. 10.0.1.4. Yeah, thank you. Okay, cool. All right. Okay. So provisioning so now, is setting up my username. So now when you were to go into this box, right, and if, you know, if it's Windows, you know, IP config in it, or, you know, if you're Linux, you just check your IP address. It'll have that IP address, and it'll have the DNS server that you set up, the external one. So once it's sort of up and running, you can sort of see that that's actually configured using that DNS server. Okay. While that's, so, yeah, while that's going, that's you can sort of say the network's in use. You could add additional DNS servers if you want to. So it's actually telling me this network's plugged in. Yeah, so be careful. If you mess with it, yeah, things exactly. are going to happen. Exactly. And so you can set up additional DNS servers. Yeah, so it's like the you wizard. You can add additional gateways, right, sort of the same sort of experience. And then, of course, for certificates, if you actually want to connect using the VPN device or you want to connect here from your box, you can actually uh, set up using, using certificates and upload them here uh, to make sure that that connection is secure and protected. So if I uploaded a certificate, I would come then over to Network and Sharing Center and then set up a new connection. Correct. Uh, connect to a workplace. It actually, it's easier than that. There's a little executable to install and it just pops into your into your connection options. Ah. Yep. So when I upload the cert, it'll just give me the connection yeah. and it sets it up for me. Yeah. That's even easier. Okay, so let's see how that virtual machine, is that virtual machine still thinking? Super like boot here. Yeah. This is the uh, fast forward part. This is fast forward. Yeah. So, Yep. Hey, see, we didn't. We wow, didn't even we fast, didn't fast forward. forward. Okay, that's. <laughs> I was awesome. ready. I was ready to, <laughs> to to cut the time here. Okay, there's no need to. Wow. Okay. So now what? Great. So now, if you actually just SSH into this box, if you want to, you can go take a look and see sort of what the. So uh, how do I SSH into it if I'm not in that network? It, because it, it actually, so that you can do your initial configuration, it does have the public endpoint right now, oh. right? So you can still go so it's, in and it's then plugged in if, you want, if you want to unplug it, you can. Uh, and so if you go in, you can actually go to your endpoints here and just connect uh, so using that. So SSH uh, username at host colon port. And so there you go. You've got your SSH details right in the portal. So, oh yeah, okay. SSH super Ubuntu, uh, it's Azure user. At superbuntu.cloudapp.net 22. Okay. There you go. Save. Password. I hope Let's I get it right it. here. Okay. Now, actually, you're going to test my knowledge of Linux. I well, don't know how to. My knowledge of Linux is type top. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. 
Okay. So this is the actual machine, and right. up here I can see uh, how much memory it's using, and that it's not working very hard. Okay. Uh, and, and getting the IP address? Uh, IF config. Great. So there you go. So you can see ah, there. 10.1. 10.4. 10.4, uh, excuse me. And then um, yeah, there's the gateway, see, 31. And then is the DNS address in here? Let's see here. I don't know how to get the DNS on the uh, NS config. Oops. Oh, I don't have those things installed. OK. Uh, do, 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 do. This is where this is where we the, use the, the internet. The public internet works. Get DNS server on Linux. <laughs> this is also how you find things out uh, when you don't know the answer. So they're saying to go off and look at my resolve conf file. I don't know about that, but I could certainly try. Oh, there, there you go. go. So you put open DNS in there, yep. or whatever DNS I want. That's right. That's right. Using DHCP, just in the way the stand standard network would be set up. Very cool. Yeah. That is really neat. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, thanks for showing me that. It gets complete control. Complete, and, and then you know, if you want to go here to endpoints, once you got this set up and maybe you connect it back on-prem, uh -huh. you go ahead and delete that sucker. Delete that endpoint. And then you're, and then you're locked in. You're, you've got that completely virtual network protected and connected back on-prem. So that is a public endpoint. That's your public endpoint. To and when you, that were to delete, you then only have your private network to talk to. Very cool. Very cool. Thanks, Scott. Yeah, it's Azure Friday. Thank mm -hmm. you.